the last uh, of the artists I'm going to talk about from the 18th century, and she really is working mostly in the 19th century, so around 1800, is Marguerite Gerard. Now, Marguerite Gerard uh, has a definite family connection with art. She is Fragonard's sister-in-law. Fragonard, of course, was one of the most famous French Rococo painters of the 18th century. Um, as unmarried women often did, they live with, um, if they have a brother or a sister, um, you know, when their uh, parents are no more, they might live with their, uh, they live with their relatives. And uh, she lived with her sister, she lived with her husband. Once again, um, something that so many of these women artists uh, did have to put up with is someone accuses, the, accuses her, so the twin accusation, oh, she's having an affair with her, her uh, uh, with Fragonard, which was a false um, accusation. Uh, it didn't make a lot of sense. Um, both because the living arrangements were pretty normal uh, when an unmarried sister lives with the other sister. Uh, and, um, you know, it may have been part and parcel of the same kind of thing of, oh, she's a woman. She's obviously a woman, a woman who has her own profession is suspect. But also the, the accusation of, oh, Fragonard painted her paintings uh, also li raised its ugly head. As you'll see, this is probably um, fictional as well. She's painting genre painting. We haven't seen that since uh, Judith Lester. And she's the first French woman genre painter with professional success. She's appealing to a particular group of people, the prosperous middle class. They have to be prosperous so they can buy the pictures. But, you know, the middle class may not always want pictures of classical antiquity or, uh, you know, but they might want some people pictures too. Um, so these definitely are going to appeal to people. Uh, they often have a suggested storyline, for example. Um, she's a very skilled artist, particularly, you know, glazing techniques are mentioned. One of the reasons for this question about did she collaborate with Fragonard or uh, did Fragonard paint her paintings? No, he didn't paint her paintings. The styles are very different. Um, there could have been some collaboration on some things. And you will still see these two pictures, uh, sometimes called Fragonard's and sometimes called Marguerite de Girard's. Um, the evidence is that there are, were engravings made after two paintings, The Beloved Child and The First Step, and the engravings are inscribed, painted by, you know, the, the original painting, Monsieur Fragonard and Mademoiselle Gérard. So, does, I mean, does that prove it? It, it might, it sounds like proof. Except the suggestion has been made that Fragonard's made, name was added by the engraver for commercial purposes. Um, you know, you use a big name person. You don't just say Mademoiselle Gérard, you know. Ah, Fragonard was part of this. So he may have been part of the design of this, of these paintings. But there's a lot of my um, Gerard in here, uh, and they may have just been by Gerard and uh, his name added. Is the reason they say, ah, oh, you know, it's by Fragonard, because there's just, of course, it's a woman. She can't possibly be doing any hard work. She's incapable. Um, or is it, um, you know, even if we say, you know, it would be possible for two painters to collaborate, especially the older painter and the younger one, but they do have different styles. Uh, Fragonard is extremely, what, airy Rococo, very painterly, very spontaneous uh, brushworks. Um, Girard does, like we said, glazing techniques, uh, layers of glazes, and she's more meticulous. Um, some of her compositions are tighter. So, you know, you're not looking at it and saying, ah, oh, this is Fragonard. Um, you can't, you know, really probably be sure. So I thought I'd bring you in a picture um, the, of two sub same subject, actually, the reader. They're both called the reader. Uh, Fragonard's is a lovely young lady uh, up close holding the book uh, with very, very deft, uh, free brush strokes, very airy. Uh, the other is a little scene by his, his sister-in-law, Marguerite Gerard. Uh, in which we have two women, full length, uh, and as you can see, it's a little bit tighter in um, the, the way it's painted. Um, and, uh, you know, they're looking at books too, but they're just totally different feel. 
Now, is it possible that this painting, The Beloved Child, this is the one that was engraved, uh, which is now in the Fogg Museum in Cambridge, um, is it possible that this was, at least in part, uh, designed by uh, Fragonard? There's certainly some airy feeling about it. Or uh, is that just because, you know, certainly there'd be some influence from him? Um, the painting, they, they do say uh, Fragonard with this one, but uh, more and more people give it to uh, Marguerite Gerard. Uh, the subject is that good mother theme, uh, maternal love. Here it's not the royal maternal love, and it's not the classical maternal love. Here it's just supposedly a contemporary young mother uh, playing with her baby, with her nursemaid and dog, uh, you know, people, um, you know, taking the child out uh, uh, for an airing. Uh, and uh, you know, this is a very popular subject, as you might admit. Um, when I did take these pictures, they are too dark. It's a very light and airy. Uh, color scheme. I'm uh, trying to give you some details. Uh, on the web, I found its companion piece. Uh, it's called First Steps, and uh, here you see some very classically dressed uh, women uh, with the baby. In you know, you know what? It's really interesting because they do have these these um, um, what do they call them? They're, they have wheels on them, and you put your baby in, and your baby can sort of have balance and toddle around. I had a uh, a third cousin that. Uh, you know, she just had to be in her, her uh, little uh, wheelie thing. Um, this one is, is, is almost like a little skirt that's uh, made out of some kind of wood or boning or something that helps the baby stand erect and learn to walk. And you see the baby is uh, starting to walk and moving toward its mother. Well, it's a charming little piece of uh, you know, maternal love once again. Um, this also, they said Fragonard, it doesn't look like a Fragonard much at all. Uh, the figures are a lot tighter. Um, it's, it just doesn't look like his style or his compositions. I'll show you some others. Uh, the motherhood theme was a bestseller, probably, too. Uh, and so we do see the idea of maternal love over and over again in some of her pictures. Uh, how happy it is to be a mother, domestic uh, felicity. Uh, the mother is loving her baby while the nursemaid is just sort of looking on. Uh, and uh, this time they have a cat. Sometimes they have a dog, sometimes they have a cat. Uh, this is uh, the piano lesson and a mother serenading her child who is in the little crib baby basket here. Um, so once again, uh, two mothers with their children um, and music as well. Uh, two different age children. Once again, that mother love theme. Um, not all of her paintings are happy. This one uh, says called Bad News. And as you can see, uh, the woman is extremely distraught. She's got a letter that has some bad news in it. Um, and uh, her, her friend or companion is, is trying to comfort her. We don't know specifically what the bad news is. You know, we can only guess. And so there is uh, something that people could do. It has a kind of narrative. Uh, is it the woman's husband has, uh, you know, maybe he's been out of, off in business, has he died, or her lover, uh, her, you know, her fiance, um, or some other family member, or, you know, whatever. We, we just have to imagine what the bad news is. Uh, the little dog is, uh, which we see so often in her pictures, uh, is there, uh, just because people had little dogs and also, you know, possibly the, the idea of the fidelity. Um, this is a painting of the artist, and it's a female artist, who is painting the musician. So we've combined art and music in the same picture. Um, and uh, the woman is accomplished in both of them. Uh, it has been suggested that this is a self-portrait of uh, Marguerite Gerard. It bears a resemblance to a drawing that Fragonard did uh, of his sister-in-law. Um, no question about Fragonard working on this one. The uh, textural detail, lovely. Uh, but you can also see, uh, you know, the solid figures. Uh, you know. And here is a work. Uh, this is a work that's in the National Museum of Women in the Arts. Once again, my slide has come out too dark, uh, but you can at least see some things about it. It's called A Prelude to a Concert. And it's a woman who uh, evidently is going to be singing or making music uh, in some way. 
Uh, there's the musical score laid out. In the background, uh, there's a kind of shadowy figure of a man, a young man, possibly her uh, uh, music instructor or just the person who's going to uh, be performing with her. Uh, there's both a dog and a cat in this one. You can see little kitty cats uh, sticking their head out behind the music. Uh, lots of beauty in the, the um, shimmering texture of the dress. And the dog is uh, on the floor. And then I tried to get a picture. Here it is. It's a little dark to see it, but there's the suggestion of the man in the background. Once again, you get to make up your own story. Uh, there were a number of women at the, um, in the early 19th century. Uh, some of these famous neoclassical artists who did have female pupils, even if they wouldn't let them in the Royal Academy, uh, some of them had uh, some success in exhibiting in the salon. Uh, one of them is Constance Chopentier, who we mentioned before as the possible uh, author of a portrait that had been believed to be a Jacques-Louis David. She was a pupil of uh, two famous uh, artists, uh, Jacques-Louis David. Okay, Constance Chopentier was a uh, pupil of Jacques-Louis David. And she was a neoclassical history painter who also did portraits and genre painters. She did exhibit in the salon. Uh, she had a, uh, a pride, prix des encouragement for a young painter and a gold medal. And uh, this was the only picture uh, that I was able to find of hers. It's melancholy. Uh, so uh, an emotional theme. Um, the painting which used to be attributed to her, uh, the woman drawing in the uh, Metropolitan Museum of Art, and dated 1801, uh, is now attributed to another woman artist, uh, Marie Denis Villiers. Villiers. Marie Denis Villiers. Um, and so you could say there's an attribution controversy. Um, you know, possibly it's a self portrait. We don't know. We don't know what she looked like. Um, but it is interesting that this uh, portrait of the woman drawing now is considered to be by a woman artist, uh, where it previously was uh, believed to be a David 